ABC Jack here. Welcome to Vinyl Martini. Uh, I'm going to show you the rest of the records I got on my Paris crate dig. But first, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, another member of the VC, uh, William V. Taper. His channel is uh, Pumping Iron. He's a record uh, dealer flipper from Omaha, Nebraska, part of the Omaha uh, Mafia, along with Derek and Tuco and the uh, the Omaha Introvert, etc. He's got a great channel, very sardonic. Uh, style and he's trying to get up to a thousand uh, thousand subscribers. So uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, I'm gonna leave a link below Check him out and uh, give him a sub. So let's just get started because I got a lot of records to show First one is from a place called music OCD uh, I was on my way to another record store and this I just happened across this record store. They had uh, they basically sell uh, used DVDs, new DVDs. They sell some new vinyl, and they had about, I'd say about eight or nine crates of used stuff on the outside outside the store. Priced anywhere from five uh, euros to 10, 10 euros. So I managed to pick out pick up a few records that, were, that I thought were interesting. First of all, uh, a guy called Lucky Peterson. This is the best of. Uh, I didn't know anything about this as a blind buy. I knew it was a blues album, uh, still sealed. For, I think it cost me about seven euros, so I couldn't pass that up. I uh, gave it a spin the other day, and this guy is a really, really great singer, great guitar player. He's been recording since he was five years old. Um, I don't know exactly where he's from. I think he's from Detroit. Um, excellent record. Uh, hard to find, uh, hard to get uh, blues records for uh, seven euros. So that was a, a great buy there. Next up is a singer called Carol Laure. I was trying to get uh, so, uh, like a French chanteuse singing uh, uh, singer. <laughs> I can't even talk today, excuse me. Anyways, uh, so I thought she was a French singer, it, but she is French, but she, she's from Quebec. And uh, she's married to uh, uh, Montreal musician, Louis Furry. Uh, she's also an actress. And it was a little, I played it the other day, a little bit disappointing because it's more in a, like a cabaret style. Um, I'll give it a couple more spins, see if I like it. But I thought I was, again, I thought I was getting a French singer from France, but uh, <laughs> what are the chances of finding a Canadian singer in, in a, a Paris music store? But there you have it. Next up, The Alarms first at EP. Um, I don't think they released this in Britain as an EP. I think they just released singles. And, in the UK. But I picked up a few alarm records. I've got their first two and I really, really like them. Very, uh, this, this EP is really good. Uh, the, the, the track is, that stands out is called The Stand. You're probably familiar with that. Uh, across the border, uh, marching on, lie the land. Uh, and the last song is For Freedom. They're all four, uh, five really good songs. Uh, really, you can tell that he's really influenced by, uh, the singer's really influenced by Joe Strummer and The Clash, uh, so really happy to have that. I'm starting to pick up. I'm gonna pick up more Alarm albums as I run across them. And <clears throat> my second Simple Minds record, this is their second 1981 release. I think they released two records at the same time. Um, this one, uh, the, the, the Love Song is the song that I recognize on here. Uh, really enjoying Simple Minds, uh, trying to build up that collection um, is something that I'm embarked on and uh, yeah, 1981, it's on Virgin Records. Really, uh, really enjoyed that. And another blind buy, excuse me, I've got all this paper here. A band called uh, Lynn Jericho, a British band. This is a 1988 release. I've never heard of the band before. Um, pretty good, I gave it a spin the other day. Uh, and the album is called The Big Area. That's, that's the single off of this. Uh, I'd never heard it before, but it's a great song. The rest of the album is, uh, you know, Typical late 80s production with the, the drums, you know, tuned a certain way, but uh, very good. I don't think they, I think they only did a couple of records before uh, breaking up. So the band is called Ben Jericho. And next up is uh, the stuff I got in a record store called Superfly Records. And uh, you buy records, they give you this nice cloth carrying bag, you know, Big straps you put on your shoulder, lug it around Paris like I did in 31 degree heat. That's about 89, 90 degrees. Just let me get them out of the bag here. Yeah, it was really, a really, it's not a very big store, but they've got so much jazz, a lot of uh, funk and soul, 
uh, rock albums, uh, all nicely created, and I think it was really fairly priced. So, this is a band called True West. I've never heard of them before. The album's called Drifter. Drifters, yes. Um, they are a band from LA. This is recorded, this was recorded in 1984. They're part of that Paisley Underground. Uh, I have a, a Long Riders album and uh, that comes out of that same movement from LA. Uh, really a post-punk band. Uh, really surprised how good this was. The song, uh, Speak Easy, Shut You Down, and Then the Rain. Great songs, really good record. Uh, again, a complete blind buy. This was uh, this was five euros. I bought this. I got this out of the bargain bins out of, out of there. Next, my first Waterboys record. Everybody, uh, a lot of people in the VC really love the Waterboys. I think Steve from All the Worlds of Stage, Steve Carlson likes the Waterboys, but they always show records from their second phase. I think when they uh, they went into a folkier stage. But this is true post. Uh, this is more post-punk. This is their third uh, record. Um, uh, I recognize two songs right away when I put it on the turntable. Uh, the first two songs, Don't Bang the Drum and The Hole of the Moon. Uh, the, re the, the rest of the record is just great. So I am going to be getting more Waterboys records. And the name of the record is This is the Sea. Uh, it is on... Um, sorry. It is on the Blue Island label. Great record, fantastic. Next up, uh, a Johnny Taylor compilation. Um, he recorded this is a, this is on Stax Records. It's a French pressing, um, and I'm not wasn't really familiar with Johnny Taylor. I was another blind buy, but Johnny Taylor was sort of one of the last of the big stars for Stax after Otis Redding died and Sam and Dave uh, split up. They were. Uh, scratching around for uh, for singers to uh, record. And Johnny Taylor, uh, after Sam Cooke left the Soul Stirrers, Johnny Taylor took over his spot in the Soul Stirrers. And then Sam Cooke uh, brought Johnny Taylor into his label, which was, I think it was ARS, um, and recorded uh, several singles for him. And then he went to Stax. And this is just fantastic soul. Uh, the, uh, unfortunately, there's no... Uh, no musician credits on here, but uh, the whole uh, uh, Stax uh, session players are backing him on this. It's a double record. A great write-up by uh, Robert Palmer on, on the inside. Fantastic. His big hit was Who's Making Love. But every song is just fantastic. It's great. I don't have enough soul in my collection, so I'm really happy I picked this up. That's Johnny Taylor, and it's called uh, The 20 Greatest Hits Chronicle. Uh, picked up a Bill Nelson record. Bill Nelson, uh, formerly of Bebop Deluxe and Red Noise, and then he has gone on to a solo career. Bill Nelson is, uh, if you're expecting more music like Bebop Deluxe, you're going to be disappointed. Um, I haven't played this yet, but I know it's more electronic, and it's actually a soundtrack to a play, um, which should have done my homework. Uh, I, I, I forget the name of the play. But anyways, it's a two-record set. I think it cost me uh, 10 euros. I collect Bill Nelson on Bebop Deluxe, so nice to pick that up. And here's a soundtrack. I'm not a soundtrack person, but this is the soundtrack to Absolute Beginners. And uh, I picked it up because it's got uh, six David Bowie songs on here. Absolute Beginners. Um, let's see. The Style Council is on here. Sharday's on here. Ray Davies songs. There's, uh, like I said, there's six David Bowie songs. Valare, uh, he didn't write that, of course, but he sings it in here. Uh, that's motivation. I'm just trying to know, I'm selling out. Anyways, Gil Elvins is, is on this record as well. So uh, I haven't played it, but that's why I bought it. It's a double, double album. Uh, if the record, or if the movie is as bad as the, uh, as the ad for it, um, must be a pretty bad movie, but uh, anybody's seen it, leave a, say something in the comments. Next up is a Man album. This is a collection on Golden Hour, the cheapies uh, British label. Actually, it was, uh, it's an import album from Plainfield, New Jersey, and it ends up in a Paris record store. But this was, I think about 10 euros. I don't have any Man records. I never see them in the bins. So uh, this is, more psych, I guess, than prog. 
Uh, really interesting. I've just listened to it once. I'm going to give it another listen. But uh, that's the Welsh band, man. Nice to have that. I'm a big Esther Phillips uh, uh, fan. This is just called, I think it's an album called Here's Esther, Are You Ready? Um, it's on Mercury, you know, the typical Mercury label. Everybody's, everybody knows what that looks like. Um, very disco-y. It was released in 1979. But uh, Esther's got a fantastic voice. So despite the disco music, it's worth it uh, to get any of her records because she's got such a unique voice. Uh, kind of a tragic, uh, tragic life. Uh, she had drug problems and she had been recording. I think she started recording when she was uh, 14 years old and started traveling and touring when she was 14 years old. So Esther Phillips. This is a real great find. Brian the Embryonic Robot just uh, did a video on uh, one of John Cale's first records. Um, this is called Honey Swa. Uh, this is fantastic. Released in 1981. Big John Cale fan. I've got about six of his records. Uh, this is highly recommended. John Cale used to be in the Velvets. He got kicked out of the Velvets. And uh, this is not, uh, you know, he, he played uh, viola, I think. And a lot of the uh, uh, Velvet's albums. It doesn't play any viola on here. This is just simply great uh, post-punk music. Uh, John Cale. Next up is Dr. Feelgood. This is a, a just straight pub rock, rock and roll. Uh, Dr. Feelgood uh, are well regarded in England. I know uh, Mike from PC31 has shown records and uh, I only have their first record. I rarely see them on this side of the pond. So this one is called Perfect for Parties and it definitely is perfect for parties. Great power uh, pop, rock and roll, pub rock, fantastic. Dr. Feelgood. Uh, I found another Doug Somm record. I'm a big Doug Somm collector. I know Mike from NGK Boston is a big Doug Somm fan and JT is a big uh, Doug Somm fan fan, excuse me, fan, and this is called Doug Somm, his first recordings. This is for Doug Somm fanatics because it is uh, singles that he recorded in the early 60s before he formed the Sir Doug Quintet. Um, and uh, really, yeah, 1961, 1962 rock, uh, American rock before the, uh, before the British invasion happened. So a uh, curious addition to my Doug Somm collection. And it's in mint condition as well. That was that was another $5 find. This might be one of the finds of the day. Jerry Harrison's uh, first solo record. It's called The Red and the Black. Of course, Jerry Harrison uh, of Talking Heads. A fantastic record. He's got Nina Hendrix on this record, uh, singing and doing some of the arranging. Very funky record. Uh, typical Talking Heads kind of signature guitar. You can see what a big role he played in Talking Heads. This is a, I think this was re-released on Record Store Day. This was another, this was in the bargain bin. I've never seen it before. It was released on Record Store Day, I don't know, two or three years ago. I, I don't participate in Record Store Day, so I'm not sure of that, but uh, really fantastic record on Sire. And last but not least, Another Jerry Jeff Walker album. I'm a big Jerry Jeff Walker fan. Um, this is a 1979 uh, uh, release. Uh, it's on. It's got an interesting label. I'll show you. The, I'll show you the label. It's on South Coast Records, distributed by MCA. And your typical. Uh, it's a typical Jerry Jeff album. Sort of country, a little bit of rock, a little bit of folk. He redoes uh, that great song on here, She Left Me Holden. He re-recorded that uh, fantastic version of that. So that is the last record I have to show you. So that was, those are the last of my Paris records. Um, so thank you for watching. Uh, if you give me a, you want to give me a like, absolutely send me a comment. I reply to all my comments, love comments. That's the, that's why we do this. Um, I am going to, Vancouver tomorrow for a week and I will be visiting some record stores there so hopefully I will have something to show you when I return uh, when I return yeah on my return so thanks again for watching till next time cheers